Hello and welcome to another episode of Invad Entry. My name is James Taylor. Today we're going to be taking a look at Python Tabulate as part of my ongoing series of... Python Library of the Day! Boop, 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 boop. And trust me, no expense was made with that intro whatsoever. <laughs> Um, before Christmas, I did a advent of code type thing where I looked at 25 libraries in 25 days. And I can't believe I didn't do this one because, quite frankly, some of the libraries I did was a scratching at that, like things that were containable in a small thing. Uh, and Tabulate is a library which I absolutely love. I've been using it so much now for, for a few years. And I don't know why it didn't spring to mind. So it is just Tabulate on PyPy. You can do pip install Tabulate. Um, and it is the Python Tabulate Library, and it's for making tables. Sorry, that's just off the screen, let me put it back on. It is for making tables. It is really easy to install, and we'll just jump straight into using it. So you import Tabulate. You actually should do um, from Tabulate. Import Tabulate is really what you do. And the idea is you have some form of array. It will take Panda arrays as well, so I might do x equals... Um, I'm going to have an array of arrays here. Uh, thing... Uh, 21, um, other thing, uh, 234, and last thing, uh, uh, these are actually going to be numbers, I'm going to change these to numbers and I'll show you why in a second. Um, so, th so, you've got to put commas in the right place, otherwise uh, nothing works, there we go. So when you print x Oh, what is going on with me this evening? There we go. Print X. You get, you get output, which is valid. You get output, which you can actually... It's basically equivalent of repr at that point. But what you actually want to do is tabulate this. So we want to say tabulate X, like that. And then that will give you a nice table format. Um, and it's really, really powerful if you've got like a whole bunch of output that you want to manage. Uh, if you actually want to put in some headers, you can then define headers separately. So if you know what the columns are, you can do headers equals um, name, uh, value, whatever, and just do headers equals that that array of things, and it just drops the headers in nicely. It does a little bit of formatting here, so it kind of knows that, it kind of guesses that the left-hand column is like your key row, so it, it left aligns that, it right aligns those things. What's really interesting, if I make this 32.31, and this one dot uh, three dis decimal points, and run that, it actually lines up the decimal point, which I think is really nice if you've got values of different things. Without doing any more formatting on this stuff, it automatically lines those things up. So straight away you can do quite powerful things. This has more columns. Now I want to point out here that I've actually added in more columns here than I've actually got in the headers. And what it will do now is it when it runs, it will assume that you haven't given it the row ID and those are the extra columns like that. So it just sort of works itself out nicely. And it's just super quick. So if you've got a whole bunch of data coming out, as long as you can express it as an array of arrays, um, it will drop out nicely and say, look at the documentation for full things. What I like about this the most, though, is that, yes, this is really nice for printing to console. And I use this on j ones to print out the commands. So I have like regexes and what functions they point at as an output when I've, when I've loaded all my data in or in startup. Um, I like in consoles, but I like in things like Discord bots. When you've got a Discord bot, um, things like Slack have like templates you can use to generate messages. Discord doesn't. So you could throw this into a, pre a code block to output whatever data you wanted to output. Um, the other thing you can do really nicely with this is you can actually use um, different formats. Okay, so for that, I'm just going to check the documentation here. Blah, 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 blah. See, you can do all kinds of headers and stuff. Uh, you can also tell that the first row is the headers as well, so you don't need to actually pass the headers. You can say, actually, the first row was in my data I already had, if you pulled it from the database or something. Um, you can also turn on row indices, which can be handy uh, if you have a lot of data and you just want to jump around the data, like you you output it to a file or something. Bearing in mind, tabulate itself doesn't print. Tabulate actually returns a string. I want to point that out here. So, so if I do foo equals tabulate, that works fine. And then I can save that to a database, put it in an email, put it in a message, whatever. So I could do a discord dot message dot send or whatever, whatever that is. So if I actually look at foo, it is actually a string with new lines in, and it, 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 it you know it's a thing. Um, if I go back to printing, if I do show index always, then you actually do get the extra column in there, which is very handy to know which row you're actually talking about. Um, 
so so this is this is a handy little zero index you know who would start from one what i like about this is the table format function so the table format function you actually pass in this lovely variable called table foot uh, and in table format one of the ones I find really useful is you can actually pass in. So plain gives you a very plain table with no columns. You can pass in Jira. And this doesn't look nice, but if you copy and paste that onto a Jira page, the Jira will go, this is a table, and drop it in correctly. If you, again, if you look at this, there's another one in here which I think is really good. There's Media Wiki. Again, making things to go on if you've got a wiki at work or something, making them to look right on wikis is a real difficult thing. I always find making this, so I just make it my, my values I want, can then output this and auto either auto insert this or copy and paste it into the output I want to do. So it's really, really powerful for making tables in other uh, languages. It's got a uh, restructured text in there, it's got markdown in here, uh, simple and GitHub. So GitHub has its own like little quirks of formatting, so it can then say, I want to, I want to output this into a GitHub format drops out the alley straight away. So most um, things I ever want to use here are in here. So it's got examples in here of all those different formats all the way down. So you pick the one you like the most. Um, when I'm outputting these days, I like the nice simple one, so I just take take this off and put it that and have a nice simple output. And, and for small amounts of data where you can see the headers, that, that kind of works for me. So as I say, Tabulate is an amazing library. Um, if It also has no dependencies. Um, which is fantastic. So pip install tablet is not expensive to add to your application, especially if you've got uh, a console app or something like that. We want to use output data or output uh, config or output information. The only thing I think which is a little bit annoying about it is that you have to um, have the entire array in memory before you can output it because it needs to know. So, so uh, and let me explain that one here. It's backwards, but if I make this value here point where with four decimal points in, it will have to space the first row out more. So when I run this one, it has to know the length of this last value before it can print the first value. So you can't really easily say on a line-by-line -line iterator, print a row, print a row, print a row. You kind of have to build your object up in memory, then pass it to tabulate. I, I, there's no way around that, right? But as I say, you have to know about the, the maximum length of any row before you can do the whole lot. Uh, there are potentially other ways of doing formatting before you put your formats in. I like separating out my business logic from my uh, calculations. I think this is more business logic saying I want to then then render the output where I've got other code actually generating what that, that array looks like. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really nice little um, thing. It just loops over um, uh, what comes out. It, it just works. Like, like it's just a really nice little um, function. So it will integrate over iterables, over dicts. It uh, with keys as columns, it'll uh, two-dimensional NumPy arrays. Uh, don't, uh, data frames for example, because they're just iterables really. Uh, don't try and give it um, things that are like three-dimensional objects or objects or objects inside because like, it, it won't know how to interpret that and it won't really know what you want from it. So you do need to do a little bit of data prep first to have tabular kind of data memory for it to tabulate for you. Um, but it's basically doing your, your columns for you. Uh, I think if you wanted to control the individual column sizes, so if you wanted to format individual columns yourself, I think you'd probably want to write a lambda or um, a, a, a generator that actually you pass it in and it would generate, you know, it would give you an iterable back. So you pass in your data into an iterable, into a generator, which would then give it the formatted output. Um, but that's it, really. I, as I say, library of the day, because I've been using this library in, in pretty much all my projects recently for outputting clean data that I can copy and paste cleanly, uh, rather than having it all jagged and like, comma separated and, and tab separated or anything like that. This allows me to have very clear data that I can copy and paste into, into things that are acceptable to management, for example. So yeah, if you're not using Tabulate, I would like to know what you are using instead. And some people say, I'm just using Pandas output, or I'm, I'm producing HTML. Yes, I'm in, I actually am in a, a web page here because I'm in Jupyter, so I could have used HTML output and pasted into HTML. Uh, but this is just because I didn't want to write a console app to, to, to do this thing. So that's it for today, and I hope if you're enjoying these, please hit like, please tell your friends. And uh, if you have your own libraries that you're interested in, that you think I should be interested in, or other people should be interested in, please leave them in a comment below. And I hope to see you all in the next episode.